So, as we all know, we are on our way back to the fleet carrier trying to uh, catch up with it. We did send it ahead of us to try to, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're doing the Deep Space Carrier series where we're trying to take our carrier as far out into deep space as we can, uh, doing an exploration series here on Elite Dangerous. Let's see, I need to, can I go ahead and just do that? Sweet. It's always nice when the, when the thing just kind of shows up over the horizon and you don't have to leave first. Um, there were three or four other bodies in this system that had a bunch of exobiology that we could have gotten to go through, but realistically, because as I've said many times on this exploration series, Elite Dangerous goes with the sort of panspermia version of biology, which means that usually whatever's on one, usually the, the stuff is all right around in one area of the solar system, and they're usually all the same thing. So even if we headed over there, yes, we'd still we get a lot more money out of it, but we wouldn't really find anything new. It's almost certainly just going to be the same stuff we found in the last one so there's that uh we have a good 22 jumps left to go before we're going to be able to um before we're going to be able to make it to our fleet carrier i would like to make it to the fleet carrier so that uh we can do some mining i can do some mining over the weekend to uh, kind of get our fuel tank filled back up so the plan for today is that yeah we're going to stop and scan for things as we go but uh i may i may try to get within as a matter of fact you know what why don't we just go ahead and do that i'm gonna go ahead and get we're just gonna go ahead and blast our way through until we get about 10 jumps away and then uh then we'll go ahead and start searching for things because i just i kind of want to front load the traveling part of this and it gives me a chance to chat with you guys especially if any of you happen to be online right now it gives you guys a chance to chat and that way i'm not focused so much on the game uh yeah i've been doing this youtube thing for i don't know over it's definitely solidly like every full time ish for you know over a year I don't, even, I don't even really remember when i really started doing full time full time it was back when i moved to mexico so a while ago uh but you know youtube is one of those things where there's a lot of different factors that have to come together before you have a real chance at making it and for the vast majority of people, it's just, it just doesn't. It's not going to happen. So, um, you know, picking the right game, which I'm sure that I don't because I don't really, I'm not super interested in a lot of the games that are super, super popular. Or I don't want to spend 60 to $80 on a game um, when I can't be sure that that's actually going to be something that actually gets me a lot of attention. So I'm kind of... Uh, it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. I a I don't really like a lot of the popular AAA, quadruple A games now that are out there. I have no interest in them. And then B, uh, they're so expensive. I don't I don't have the money to pay for that. And even if I did have the money, I don't really want to pay the money for that. It's just like I just don't I don't want it. I don't want to do it. Um, I'm just I'm one of those I'm one of those people who. Uh, the things I enjoy tend to not be things that everybody else enjoys, and that's going to make it that's going to make it even harder for me. Uh, it's not a sob story. I'm just stating facts. It is it is what it is. Uh, so I just I keep getting on here every day, hoping that it, uh, hoping that uh, you know my persistence will pay off, and if I make enough videos, uh, the sheer volume of uh, the sheer volume of videos out there uh, might make up for the fact that uh, maybe maybe the stuff I'm playing isn't the most popular content out there. I don't know. We'll see. It sort of seems to be working, uh, so be sure to click that like button and subscribe to help us reach the uh, 10,000 subscriber mark. The more people we have subscribing to the channel, ideally the more often my videos get recommended, even if they don't necessarily fall into whatever category YouTube is hoping they do. Um, we definitely need, I think there definitely needs to be a major update to the way that, uh, to the way that these video platforms analyze their videos because sticking it into a category and forcing people to, to stick themselves into a category is just kind of ridiculous uh, especially because you know i don't think i don't think there's too many there's not that many people who can be so obsessive over one thing and f just focus them like me right me i can't i can't i can't do that i can't i i get i get bored <laughs> like i know i've been doing this elite dangerous thing for the last you know over a year at this point i think um and well almost a year i think i started in december yeah i started in december of last year because uh of the free arts and everything i was like well if i'm gonna log in i might as well go ahead and make some videos out of it because you know why not and then we started this exploration series and it's gone and it's continued since then um but it's not the only game I play. And if it was the only game, if it, if, I, if it had to be the only game I played, I would lose my mind. I wouldn't be able to, I would not be able to continue making content for this. So uh, to my friend from Battle Vortex, 
I am not uh, I am not uh, trying to disregard what you're saying. I absolutely agree. You are 100% right. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying that for me, my impatience and ADD and whatever else you want to throw at it that makes me unable to really focus on any one thing for a very long period of time, I just, I can't, I can't produce that kind of content. I, I just can't do it. Um, and if that means that I never make it, then it's just, that's, I guess that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, you know, that's not, and like, I don't mean that to come off as like prideful or arrogant. It's just, I know myself well enough to know that there, there is no game on the planet that I could focus myself on and keep doing it forever. Um, World of Warcraft, back when it was super popular, um, and when I mean super popular, I mean by like Wrath of the Lich King popular. Uh, I was sort of like that, but I'm so I'm so burnt out on that kind of burnt me out on sticking with one thing for a very long time. Um, I just I can't I can't be like that with any game anymore. I can I, I I'll I'll get obsessive with a game for for a while, maybe a couple of months, maybe a few months. Like Path of Exile, I got super obsessed about it for a while because you know I just I wanted to experience the story and then I wanted to level up several characters and try different things and try a few different builds. But eventually, you know, you get to the point where you're just like, oh, I don't want to play this game anymore. I'm bored. I want to find something else to do. Uh, so my goal has always been, and then, you know, video games in general, the older you get, the older you get, the less, the less the video games satisfy the whatever, whatever desire it is that a video game satisfies. Um, you know, uh, especially for those of us who choose to get on YouTube and try to make a, make a go of this. We're seeking more than just sharing our video game experiences. We're trying to create something that provides value to everybody, ourselves and you as the viewer. Uh, and value equals money. And you know, I don't, I, for me, it's not—it's not really about the money, but it is about the money, right? Like, uh, it's one of those things that uh, once you once you're able to pay the bills and you don't have any, anything messing with you anymore you can make a choice at that point you could say all right i've i've reached the level of success that i want to reach and now i'm okay and you know what anything extra is nice but i don't care um or you can get greedy and decide you want to make millions and millions and millions of dollars and all of that and there's people that go either way with that me i like to believe that uh, if i could get to the point where i can turn this into a full-time gig that provides me with a sustainable income for a long for the for the foreseeable future i will have reached the point where i'm content and all of that but until i reach that point I have bills to pay and I need this, you know, I would like for this to become the thing that pays the bills. So obviously that's always going to be a focus of everything that I do on the channel. Uh, I try not to make a big deal out of it that much, but uh, uh, since it was brought up on a stream I was watching just a few minutes ago, I just wanted to, I just wanted to talk about it because we're, we're trying to kill some time before we start actually looking for things. Okay, how many jumps do we have left? I want to get down, I want to get down to 10 jumps before we really start. I should have. I could have been charging right now. I'm in the habit of like leaving the thing before I start frame shift drive, frame shift uh, charging. But I keep forgetting. With this particular ship, I'm able to just do it immediately as soon as we can see the star. Like if I could turn off the, if I could turn off the little warning that, uh, if I could turn off the little warning that says, oh, it's not in the line of sight, I just spam the key until it until it starts charging. <laughs> I just don't want to hear. Cannot comply. Cannot comply. Cannot comply, or whatever whatever message it is that comes up when uh, it's out of the line of sight, or whatever. We'll grab as many of the we'll grab as many of the discovery scanner scans as we can get. But uh, yeah, we got three more jumps, and then we'll start scanning for stuff. Ooh, don't want to don't want to don't want to do that. That would have been bad. Okay. So yeah. Um, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of people who would say don't talk about certain subjects. Yeah. I talk about what I want to talk about, uh, and you don't have to like it. Uh, you may not just, you may not agree with where my mindset is, and that's totally fine. There's a lot of people I don't agree with where their mindset is. I just try to be me, you know, and I'm hoping that me is interesting enough that enough people want to watch, and that turns into like I would, I would much rather. I would much rather have uh, have people who are you know interested in contributing to me as a content creator rather than relying on ad revenue. Uh, I would I would love it if I could just turn off ads and you know viewers paid me to do what I'm doing right now rather than the other way around. But 
that's unrealistic. That's a completely unrealistic setup. Like there's there's a lot of people that will. I do have channel members and you guys are very much appreciated. I wish I could have so many more of you guys who contribute to the channel and are help, trying to help me uh, grow into what I'm trying to get to. You guys are amazing and you know, if more people were like you, I would be much closer to my goal. Uh, but you know, the real the the reality is is that the things that make for the most part as far as, as far as I'm aware, the thing that makes YouTube successful is growing your channel to the point where you make a decent amount of ad revenue. I know most channels say that that's not their biggest source of revenue, and that's fine. But sponsorships, I don't want to do sponsorships. I really don't want to. Like unless unless it's a product that I really like, I, I'll do sponsorships for products that I really like. But I don't really want it. Like just advertising and selling you guys stuff. It just it makes me feel gross. I don't want. I, I don't want to do it. You know, but at some at some point you got to suck it up and say, you, you know, I don't really want to do this, but at the same time, you, you got to do what you got to do, and uh, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't want to do that I end up having to do. So, uh, you know, if I could get if I could find a sponsorship with a company that, uh, you know, is interested in is interested in supporting the channel and it's a it's a product that I already like that would be kind of cool I guess uh, you know I wouldn't feel as bad trying to sell something if uh, if it's a product that I actually like and I use and I enjoy uh, you know big screen beyond why don't you guys send me a sample and <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding I mean I wouldn't say no but that, that's an unreasonable ask an unreasonable ask but uh, yeah, my point is, is that, uh, you know, I have goals in life just like everybody else. And I like to talk about my goals because, you know, talking about them and it, talking about them kind of motivates me to keep going. Help, it kind of helps to reiterate to yourself what you're trying to do, what you're trying to get done. All right. So, well, there's only three bodies here and two of them are stars. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, we're just going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Um, you know. It's one of those things where you have to remind yourself sometimes of what it is you're trying to do. You, you, get too, you, you get lost in the grind too much and you lose track of the big picture. You forget why you're doing things. And it gets harder and harder to just keep getting up and doing it every day. So, you know, every once in a while I need to have a heart-to-heart -heart with myself and I do it here on camera because it's something to talk about. <laughs> it's something to talk about. Um, eventually, you know, I started doing this live stream format because I'm hoping that, um, you know, people people are interested. They come, they hang out, they come in to chat, and the chat itself becomes content because I think I think the podcasting world has shown us that you know most people are far more interested in uh, are far more interested in conversation than they are in gaming. Uh, I have found that in general. The videos that do the best for me are the ones where I talk about stuff that isn't the game. Um, you know, because people just want to feel like they're hanging out. Especially a lot of the, especially a lot of the more lonely people out there who don't, you know, they, they struggle to make friends or they struggle to do this. Or they struggle to be in social situations, which trust me, I understand. I was a, I was a massive nerd growing up, and I was not one of those people that uh, had lots of friends. Um, it's just the way it was. So I totally understand. I was there with you. And then I joined the Marine Corps and uh, more or less stayed the same. But then, but then I had the confidence of being a Marine, and that kind of makes up for a lot of the the antisocial behavior that most of us nerds end up having. So I have the confidence to be able to step into a social situation, but I'm still I'm still uncomfortable in them. I don't like I don't like having to deal with that. I'm, it's just gonna be a it's gonna be a gas giant or a, yeah it's gonna be a gas giant of some kind. That's what that last one was. So. No chance of that being any kind of exobiology. We will go ahead and move on to the next system. So that's why I'm able to get here, get up here on YouTube and portray something, some, something somewhat resembling confidence because I spent uh, more than a decade of my life in the Marine Corps, and uh, you know that changes you. It just does. So yeah, um, you know it is what it is. So yeah, I am in response to my friend over at Battle Vortex. I am fully aware that the, the the way I'm running my channel is absolutely making it way harder. But at the same time, I just I just don't I don't have it in me to I don't have it in me to do that to to just focus on one specific game. I can't because I mean eventually 
eventually, no matter how much I want to keep trying, I, I'm going to sunset Elite Dangerous. It's just, it's going to happen. I haven't reached that point yet, um, and that's mostly because I don't have to do a lot of prep work for it. I can just hop on, do 30 minutes, and then move on to something else. I'd like It doesn't require a lot of time and effort on my part to just hop into the game, do some exploration stuff, maybe do some mining, pay some bills, and then move on to the next game. But if it was something where I had to do, like put in a lot of time and effort off camera to make it work, no. The only reason, uh, the only reason I've, I've been kind of halfway messing around with DCS World is because I have a flight campaign that I'm hoping to post for sale uh, in the near future. Still haven't heard back from the developers on that, so I, I may have to start trying to sell it independently, which sucks. I really, I really wanted to try to get that up on the web store. It would have been really nice to be able to do that. All right, uh, what do we? We are looking for the gas giant here, which means that there's going to be a bunch of moons. So, you know, uh, there's, there's, like I said, there's a lot of people who would say that, you know, there's a lot of things I shouldn't be talking about, but I'm not trying to, I'm trying to build a brand of, uh, I'm trying to build a brand around me as a genuine person, not, not as some persona that, uh, you know, where I'm pretending to be something that I'm not. I'm just going to be me, and hopefully enough people are interested in that, that it becomes a thing. I don't know. I got some geological... Ooh, okay, here we go. There's always a chance that when you start seeing some geological stuff, that means you might find some biological stuff, because, you know, there's the whole life develops in extreme, and life developed in uh, a soup or something like that, and when you have a lot of geology going on. I would imagine that probably gives you a higher chance of those chemicals mixing in whatever way creates life. I'm guessing. I don't know. Okay, we got most of those. Let's get this last gas giant, and then ideally its surrounding moons will be all that's left. I guess it wasn't the last gas giant. There's one more. Mm, that one. Grab this guy here. Oh, nope. Biological 2. You know what? We, we're, we're kind of in a hurry. So unless we find something super juicy, as in something that's like, all right, we're just gonna go ahead and move on. Unless we find uh, like a, a high metal content planet with two biological sources, uh, I don't really want to stop for two biological sources unless it's on a high metal content planet, because that's almost that's almost a guarantee that it's gonna end up being stratum tectonicus. And realistically, what I'm kind of hoping to get done by the end of this episode is I want to head, <clears throat> I want to get to the destination, I want to catch up with our carrier, do the system scan there, and then go identify uh, a tritium ring, hopefully, because uh, according to our spreadsheet for this, the system that our carrier is currently in should have a nice pristine ring set in there, which gives us a, a decent chance of having a tritium hotspot, and that's what we really want. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and hop into the next system. I'll stop for, since we're in a hurry, I'm going to lower my max bodies to scan uh, to like 15-ish. Because uh, I can I can burn through that pretty quickly. Uh, when you start getting up into the high 20s, there's usually, you usually have to search, you usually have to move around and look around a lot more. Versus when you only have like 15, uh, it, it's a little easier to find things. Not just because there's less bodies, but just because they tend to be grouped in a different way, and it makes it a little bit more streamlined to find them. That's been my experience, anyways. I, I don't know how real, realistic that is. Uh, we're catching... A, hey there, uh, I'm not going to say you know, the second part of your name. But, hey there, blog. <laughs> I'm not going to verbally say that part, but uh, yeah. Uh, we are in the Mandalay Heck, trying to catch up with our carrier, which we sent ahead to our next... to our, uh, our next fuel stop for the for it. Um, so we're doing exploration along the way as we go. Uh, yeah, there's that. Let me see here. Uh, what am I missing here? What am I missing? Oh, it's a, uh, okay, asteroids. Okay, let's do that. So yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm slightly in a hurry because I want to try to catch up. I want to try to get to the fleet carrier before we, uh, before we end the episode so that I can hopefully find, uh, it's a, is that a rocky body? I'm not, yeah, you know what? We're just going to go. 
I don't want to get distracted. I want to. I want to find the. I want to hopefully find a tritium hotspot by the time we're in. We're done for the day because this is our last stream for the week, and I want to find the tritium hotspot before I log off so I can uh, go do some mining over the weekend and stock up again. Four, three, two, one. I forgot how many jumps we have left. It's like I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah, I've been noticing that. I uh, <laughs> I've been noticing that on the on the systems that have more than uh, say twenty ish bodies, I just blow right through that. And this is the first ship that I've used so far that allows me to do that. To just start charging the FSD while I'm in the middle of scooping. It's pretty. It's pretty sweet. This ship is growing on me as much as I resisted getting it. I'm still not a big fan of the of the the way it looks, but it. It flies. Amazing. Right, how many more jumps do we have left? Three more jumps? Excellent. I have to s I have to say that my favorite part about this ship is the pinpoint accuracy near the ground. No other ship gives me the ability to just to kind of see something on the ground and immediately flips flip over and like point at it and just go straight at it. Even the even some of the smaller ships don't don't do it as well as this ship does, so I am, I am very impressed with the maneuverability of the ship. Kind of wish I'd had I kind of wish we had had this a long time ago because uh, it's it's definitely displaced the Phantom as my favorite exploration ship already, just from that, and the fact that I can la it's a lot easier to land. the The smaller footprint for the landing gear makes it so much easier to land. Yeah, unfortunately, it's only for real money at the moment. Um, the I wasn't going. I, I don't really like to spend money, extra money on the on these things. But since I'm doing an exploration series, I kind of had to. But then again, I did end up buying the Type Eight too because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get it later. So, and I thought it looked cool enough, and I wanted to. Own it. <laughs> I did not buy the uh, the the what was it the the first one that came out the. Python, the Python, uh, the updated Python. I didn't buy that because I didn't like. I, I wasn't interested enough in the ship. Yeah, I would definitely say wait for the wait for it to come in for credits. It's uh, I, I wouldn't. I would not recommend buying it for cash unless you just really, really want it bad right now. Uh, if you have the patience to wait, absolutely wait. Okay, how many? Uh, next jump, we're gonna go ahead. And, well, I'll just. I'm just I'm trying to hurry up and get to catch up with the carrier because supposedly this next the system that it's in should have a pristine icy ring which gives us a decent chance at fighting some tritium. But yeah, everything about this ship, uh, if if you if well supposedly it's really good for ex it's really good for combat like there's a lot of people using it as a combat ship. But if you're into exploration, um, I was just saying like the the the, the ability to just kind of like s immediately stop and turn around and point yourself at something on the ground and then go land. Ugh. With the way I do exploration, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, we don't need a fuel scoop because... Uh, yeah. Alright, I just need to get my discovery scanner done. And then now we just need to search for some icy rings. Alright, right there. Uh, there's some rings. I wouldn't say that those look pristine to me. Twentieth for the for a T eight for credits Mandalay oh yeah yeah sometime next year pretty into explanation exploration I know it uh, yeah I well I just I don't personally like the Anaconda to begin with because uh, I, I I don't like their choice to make it basically good like really really good at everything. Um, I think I think ships should be really good at one thing, and at best mediocre at other stuff. And the Anaconda kind of gets a nope. We're making this great at everything, so and that's just how we're gonna do. It. Oh, okay, and that's just how we're gonna do it. So uh, I'm kind of biased against the Anaconda just because I don't. I believe a jack of all trades should be a master of none, and it seems like they tried to make it pretty close to master of everything. But that's just an opinion. Okay, just trying to finish. All right, that's enough of that. Let's uh, let's go see if 
We have some... And some rocky rings. More rocky rings. Alright. And let's go check it out and see. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> to be perfectly honest with you, I don't necessarily mind big ships. Uh, if I had my... Oh, I screwed that up. I got busy talking. Uh, if I had my choice, uh, and I've said this before on, on different videos, I would love it if they updated the Beluga uh, to have a little bit better in the way of a fuel, better fuel scoop, better heat management, a longer jump range, and then if they made fighters landable, and you could turn your your fighter into basically a shuttle, that would be a really I think that would be a really badass like, exploration platform. <clears throat> Okay, just gotta get over here so we can scan this one here, scan this, uh, scan this ring set here, and hopefully it's gonna have the tritium that we need, or the tritium hotspot that we need. Then I can spend a couple of days doing some mining, and maybe we'll start, uh, maybe we'll start our stream off on Monday with some mining just to finish that up. I'll, I'll, I'll leave some, uh, I'll leave some, some room in the, in the tritium tank to do that. Okay, get the ring. Don't need to wait for don't need to wait for that. And we just need to see if a tritium hotspot pops up. Hmm. That's not good. I was really hoping we were gonna get to uh, get what we needed here. So unfortunately it does well, what am I looking for? I'm trying to get out of the galaxy I'm trying to get out of the system map. Oh, that's unfortunate. I was really kind of hoping that that was going to work out for us. We have a we have a bunch more to do, but no more no more large stuff. Hmm. Well, that sucks. Unfortunately, that means that I'm going to have to go find... I'm going to have to go do some exploring off-camera to make that work. That sucks. Well, let's go ahead and get ourselves back to the carrier. Get our, get us get landed. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the when to deactivate this thing. It's kind of annoying. I had it kind of down with the other ships, but this thing deceler decelerates so aggressively that it's kind of hard to figure out when you should turn it off to get like the optimum, like the minim minimal amount of time to get to where you're going. Oh, we're gonna fly right by the star. Uh, yeah, I think next week we should make it. We should make it to Colonia next week. Come on. Uh, I think right now it's four jump. We're four jumps away. The, we're four jumps away. So we'll do uh, we'll do some mining. We'll do some mining next week. Hopefully, F top off the tank for whatever I didn't get done over the weekend, and then uh, episode the, the the Tuesday through Friday we'll get over to Colonia and figure out what we're doing next. Okay, 7.5, boom. There it is. Thank you for visiting our carrier, Commander. We look forward to your custom. Clearance granted. Move directly to your allocated pad. Oops. A little too aggressive there. All right. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and take a second to run into, well, carrier services. We can go ahead and sell our cartographic data. But let's see how much money we made this week. Oh, I'm the Tritium Depot. Universal cartographics. That might help. Pressing the right button uh, usually makes a difference. It does. It does. Okay. Can you load, please? Uh, okay, there's no money here, and I'm not wasting my time waiting on that to load. Uh, they need to, they really need to fix their uni universal cartographics there. It's it's kind of ridiculous. It's a freaking list of systems. Why does it take so long to get the information? 
All right, so let's run inside real quick, sell, see how much money we made this week. And then it's on to DCS World. Ba, ba, ba. I pressed I pressed my five key out of habit because I'm used to no pulling out my ready. scanner as soon as we get off the ship. <laughs> I expected my I expected my bio, my uh, exobiology scanner to pop out and I'm like, wait a minute, we're not even on the planet right now. I can't do that. Any day. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Over here, off to the left. Let's see how much money we made. Medstone. Can I ah, I follow Sell you. our ah, data. Let's see what you've got for us. 37 million. And then there should have been uh, at least one or two first footfalls. Oh, wow. 185 million. Look how much cash we made. That's a lot. And then, uh, yeah, let's just make sure our carrier balance is topped off. I like to keep our number at at least 1 billion credits just to make sure we have uh, a nice round number sitting in the bank account. Uh, balance is currently not. So let's go ahead. We'll deposit. We will deposit enough to bring our carrier balance back up to a 1 billion. Um, kind of wish they would just let me type in a number. Ugh, just running back and forth. <laughs> There we go. Confirm. All right. Well, for those of you who are just watching the recording, thank you for watching. Be sure to click the like button, subscribe to help us reach 10,000 subscribers. Join as a member if you don't like early access to videos, among other perks, or you can just leave YouTube's version of a tip with the thanks button. Yeah. Again, thank you for watching. Once Come back for the next episode, or you can watch us live every day, every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific. See you then.